Hi, my name is Tracy Anker, and I am a senior at Peru State College, and I am in, currently taking my Capstone English Seminar course, and so I am here to talk about a couple of things that I've learned um, during my stay here at Peru State College in my writing courses, and the first thing I'm going to talk about is sensory impressions and how important it is um, to teach your students to have a, the sensories in their writing to bring their writing to life and then I'm also going to touch base on um, a strategy that I learned called facts and fibs and that strategy is basically um, a really great technique um, that teachers can use to find out what their students current knowledge is on the subject that they're teaching so it could be used for any topic but I'll talk a little bit about it and how I used it in a mini lesson that I taught for um, creative writing. Um, but first of all, the sensory impressions and why it's important is because, well, the main purpose is to help your reader to experience the story um, by using the five senses, uh, by using the art of feeling, seeing, hearing, tasting, smelling. The impressions, um, those impressions are going to be what creates the mood or the atmosphere in the reader's mind. So, by providing vivid language, um, it's going to bring your story to life, and it's important to teach students to use all five senses in their writing as much as they possibly can, especially when they're writing um, a creative story. Um, sensory details, they, like I said, they provide the, they, they are meant to provide a picture in your reader's mind, so that way it's going to be really comparable to the same picture that you're having in your mind as you're writing the story. Um, it makes your paper very effective um, because the reader feels like they're involved, that they're right there with you as um, they're reading the story. It's the most vivid way to engage the reader. So in order to know what your students already know about um, sensory impressions or creative writing at all for that matter, um, like I said, um, facts and fibs is a great um, technique to use, a great strategy. And basically what that is, is it just statements or questions um, that you ask your students. They could be true, false, however you want to do it so that you know what they know. And you purposely put some in there that are true and some that are false. So for example, for one that I did with creative writing, um, a statement I said was creative writing covers a wide range of genres. So true or false. So um, if all your kids um, raise their hand for true, then you know that you don't have to teach that. Um, another one um, that's a little bit more difficult that I put was all creative writing comes from the yeah, imagination, true or false. So to me, I think most students would write or they would vote false because you know they would think that most or all creative writing is from the imagination. It's fake. It's made up. And while most of that is true, um, not all of it is. So like there is some creative writing that is partially based on real events, so and students need to become aware of that. Um, and then there's also the term creative nonfiction. That term came about, I think, around the 1970s, and um, that's um, that came about to describe um, factual events um, by using creative writing. It's um, different from just your regular nonfiction writing. Um, because it involves um, personal involvement of the narrator for the subject. It's, um, it uses more of a stylized technique than regular nonfiction, and it's closer to a novel. And that's really what distinguishes um, creative nonfiction from other types of um, informational writing. So, um, But anyway, um, when you're using that technique, the facts and fibs um, strategy technique, you can if you have access to a clicker quiz, that's going to give you instant feedback because you can see right then and there who knows and who doesn't know. But if you don't, then just by a show of hands is another way. The only thing I don't like about that is some kids might, you know, pick their answer based on whose hand they see at first. So if you do have um, access to using clicker quizzes, um, that's the best way, in my opinion, that I've seen so far anyway. So, um, but that's all I really wanted to talk about, and um, hopefully I gave you enough detailed information on that, or at least add a little bit more um, to what facts and fibs is and um, to sensory impressions. Thank you.